Well, welcome back. This um, uh, at this point we're in week two of the um, six three two three course in apologetics, uh, apologetics in terms of ministry, and also a broad survey of the types of apologetics that uh, <clears throat> are out there and that people have engaged in. And the primary focus this week is upon the need for people to uh, hear a witness, uh, an apologetic witness. Now, I've made this statement before, but I think it's important for me to make it again. And that is that apologetics is not just memorizing some facts and figures related to uh, the resurrection of Jesus or uh, 10 steps to getting somebody out of atheism or something along those lines. But apologetics is a whole life issue. Uh, this is one of the key concerns of Guinness's book. And in fact, uh, we're reading again this week from Guinness, chapters 4 and 5, and from Chesterton, chapters 3 and 4, and then chapter 2 in the Steve Cowan book on uh, perspectives on apologetics. And in both the Guinness and the uh, book by Chesterton, that's really what the focus is. The difference between the two books, I think, is that with Guinness, we're looking through the lens of a man who spent the better part of half a century engaged in witnessing to people and using uh, apologetics, using uh, a variety of different ways of thinking about the gospel in order to reach people with the message. And so he's now <clears throat> reflecting back on all of that, that that was his primary focus. With Chesterton, and this may have something to do with the fact that he was a Catholic, <clears throat> it may something have something to do with the fact with his temperament being quite a different temperament than uh, you would find in Guinness. Um, what Chesterton is doing is he's sort of looking around. So Guinness is looking back, Chesterton is looking around, and he's asking the question, "What is the human condition today, and how is that human condition misunderstood by intellectuals in our world?" And I think that's one of the uh, key contributions of. Uh, the Chesterton book. We saw that in chapters 1 and 2. There, uh, there's a tendency for anthropological speculation, speculation about the nature of what the human condition is on the part of intellectuals, and most of the time they don't have enough information. Now, we could spend a lot of time here. We won't in the lectures, but hopefully we'll gather some of this in the reading, looking at what changed in the 19th century that so altered the the understanding of the human condition. And I'm just going to tell you that, that the big names here will be names like Marx and Freud and Darwin. Those are going to be the three big names. Um, and let me just say something about why that is the case. Uh, Darwin introduced an idea, evolution, and he wasn't the first one to mention evolution. Evolutionary thought preceded Darwin, but Darwin staged a scientific way of understanding evolution uh, that enabled for that theory to creep into a variety of different disciplines, acting as a kind of an acid. Now I'll pick up on that idea of Darwinism as a universal acid later on. Freud, the same way, uh, we can compress the understanding of the human psyche into, uh, into the whole theory of hydraulic psychology that he came up with. And, uh, and Marx, of course, creating a sense of victimhood on the part of minorities that is filtered down to our very time. So those are some issues, I think, that stand behind the argumentation of Chesterton, but also of Guinness. Uh, so let me just say something here about what this week's going to be, because this lecture is short summary of week two. We will read the material. We will look at the lectures, watch the lectures. Um, there's a forum, as there was last week, and then there'll be a quiz. The quiz will be available uh, early, uh, pretty early on Friday. I can't gauge exactly what time it'll be up, but it'll be up Friday morning. And the quiz will be there until late on Sunday. Uh, this is the first quiz, and let me emphasize something that I've talked about before, but I think maybe some of you missed in the last class, and that is read the material, but you can use your book in taking the quiz. Mark those books up. I know some of you check them out of libraries. If that's the case, write down key quotes. Look at the outlines that I'm setting up. 
which pretty much follow the reading material. And so make sure that you take that quiz. Um, try to push for getting a, a 20 out of 20. The quiz, of course, is a combination of true, false, multiple choice. And uh, by the time we finish this week, we're a fourth of the way through. So uh, when I come back, <clears throat> we're going to look at lecture number uh, 2.1, that is week two, lecture one, looking at the Guinness material in chapters four and five.